North Korea has consistently defied international norms and sanctions by conducting nuclear tests and launching ballistic missiles, causing global tension and anxiety. Despite claiming that its nuclear program is for self-defense, many experts and observers are concerned about the potential for a devastating conflict in the region or beyond. The latest provocation from Pyongyang involves the successful testing of a new weapon capable of striking anywhere in the United States. This development raises questions about the credibility of North Korea's claims, the implications for the balance of power, especially for the US and its allies in South Korea and Japan, and how the international community should respond to this new challenge from the rogue state. North Korea's nuclear program traces back to the 1950s, with support from the Soviet Union and China to enhance scientific and military capabilities. Despite signing the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty in 1995, North Korea resisted full inspection by the International Atomic Energy Agency. In 1994, an agreement with South Korea led to the freezing of its nuclear program in exchange for economic and energy aid, but this deal collapsed in 2002. North Korea was accused of a covert uranium enrichment program, leading to its withdrawal from the treaty in 2003 and declaring itself a nuclear state. The country engaged in six nuclear tests between 2006 and 2017, increasing in yield and sophistication. Various ballistic missiles, with the potential to carry nuclear warheads, were also developed and tested. After months of silence, North Korea shocked the world by resuming missile tests, launching a powerful ballistic missile with the capability to strike any part of the US mainland. The missile's altitude exceeded 6,000 kilometers, a record for North Korea, posing a grave threat to regional and global security. Japan's Vice Minister of Defense, Shingo Miyake, suggested that the missile could be an intercontinental ballistic missile with a range of over 15,000 kilometers, putting the entire US territory within reach. Further analysis is needed to verify the missile's type, size, payload, and trajectory. The launch, while landing outside Japan's exclusive economic zone, raised concerns, especially for residents in the northern island of Hokkaido, who have experienced previous missile alerts. The Japanese government issued public warnings to seek shelter, avoid missile debris, stay calm, and follow authorities' instructions following North Korea's launch of two ballistic missiles within two days. The launches, including a powerful ICBM with the potential to strike any part of the US mainland, were a serious violation of international norms and resolutions prohibiting North Korea from nuclear or missile testing. Prime Minister Fio Kishida condemned the launches as a grave provocation and a threat to regional and global security, convening a National Security Council meeting in response. Although no damage or injuries were reported, the launches raised concerns about peace and stability in the region. The U.S. State Department spokesperson criticized the launches as a violation of UN Security Council resolutions, emphasizing the commitment to defend allies and uphold the rules-based international order. North Korea's repeated testing of ICBMs, while theoretically capable of reaching anywhere in the U.S., prompted concerns, with experts noting the regime's ongoing efforts to perfect the technology for carrying multiple nuclear warheads over long distances. The recent launch, marked by the highest and longest flight of a North Korean missile, showcased the country's growing capabilities and ambitions. Observers suggested that North Korea's consecutive launches may be a protest against the strengthened nuclear deterrence plans by South Korea and the US in response to Pyongyang's growing nuclear threat. US and South Korean officials met in Washington to update their nuclear deterrence and contingency strategies incorporating nuclear operation scenarios into joint military exercises next summer. They also explored ways to enhance cooperation with Japan and other partners to address the North Korean challenge. The international community called for condemnation, additional sanctions, and increased pressure on North Korea to halt its nuclear and missile programs. The US, Japan, and South Korea held an emergency meeting to discuss the situation and coordinate their response. They also called on China and Russia to assume a more constructive role in persuading North Korea to denuclearize and engage in dialogue. The missile launch has raised concerns about the effectiveness of diplomatic efforts to engage North Korea and convince it to abandon its nuclear and missile ambitions. Washington and Seoul have intensified joint military drills, 
including the temporary deployment of strategic U.S. assets such as aircraft carriers, nuclear-capable bombers, and a nuclear-armed submarine in and around South Korea. These drills were intended to showcase the strength and readiness of the U.S.-South Korea alliance, deterring any aggression from the North. Despite these measures, North Korea appeared undeterred by the drills and responded with its characteristic fiery rhetoric, threatening retaliation with its nuclear and missile capabilities. The North also aimed to strengthen its ties with Russia and China, traditional allies and rivals of the U.S., in an apparent effort to form a counter-alliance against the U.S. and its allies. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met with Vladimir Putin in September, discussing ways to enhance cooperation and mutual support on regional and international issues. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi reportedly met North Korea's Vice Minister of Foreign Affairs Pi Mang-ho in Beijing, reaffirming China's commitment to the traditional friendship shared by both countries. The North Korean Defense Ministry issued a strong statement against Seoul and Washington's decision to include nuclear operation scenarios in their joint military drills, considering it an open threat by hostile forces to potentially use nuclear weapons against the North. The ministry warned that any attempt to use armed forces against the DPRK would face a preemptive and deadly counteraction. The statement accused the US and South Korea of escalating military tensions and undermining peace efforts on the Korean peninsula. Tensions between the two Koreas escalated further, after North Korea launched its first military reconnaissance satellite into space on November 21, defying UN bans on its space and missile activities. The launch marked a significant advancement in North Korea's missile technology, moving towards establishing a space-based surveillance system to monitor enemies' movements and enhance strategic capabilities. Despite international sanctions and pressure, North Korea demonstrated its determination to pursue nuclear and missile programs. In response to the launch, South Korea announced plans to resume frontline aerial surveillance, aiming to enhance intelligence, deterrence capabilities, and counter threats from the North. North Korea quickly retaliated by restoring border guard posts, breaching a 2018 inter Korean deal on easing frontline military tensions. This deal, part of a broader diplomatic initiative to improve inter Korean relations and facilitate denuclearization, has stalled due to lack of progress and renewed provocations by the North. China, being North Korea's main ally, trading partner, and aid source, plays a crucial role in resolving the crisis. China has a strong interest in maintaining stability and peace on the Korean peninsula, preventing a nuclear war or a refugee crisis that could impact its security and interests. Additionally, China seeks to avoid a scenario where North Korea collapses and reunites with South Korea under U.S. influence, potentially altering the balance of power and creating a U.S.-friendly neighbor. China has actively participated in diplomatic initiatives aimed at persuading North Korea to denuclearize and engage in dialogue, including the six-party talks involving China, North Korea, South Korea, the U.S., Japan, and Russia. Recent summits between the leaders of China and North Korea have reaffirmed their friendship and cooperation. China has supported and enforced UN sanctions on North Korea, but it has also advocated for easing sanctions, providing humanitarian assistance, and pursuing a dual-track approach of pressure and dialogue. China has sought to balance its relations with both Korea's and other regional powers to avoid confrontation, or conflict that might escalate into war. However, China faces limitations in resolving the North Korean crisis due to factors such as the lack of trust and communication between China and North Korea. North Korea often acts independently and unpredictably without consulting or informing China. Additionally, China's interests diverge from those of the US. It does not wish to see complete denuclearization that weakens its leverage or a regime change that destabilizes the region. China also grapples with the unpredictability and defiance of the North Korean regime, which continues to test nuclear and missile capabilities despite international condemnation and pressure. Managing the complexity and sensitivity of nuclear and security issues involving multiple actors, interests, technical, and legal aspects is another challenge for China. Recent developments indicate that China may be forming a strategic alliance with North Korea and Russia, driven by a common perception of the U.S. as a threat to their sovereignty and interests. This alliance reflects shared ideology, worldview, historical, and cultural ties. 
While potentially challenging for the US and its allies, this alliance could increase military and diplomatic support for North Korea, as well as resistance to sanctions and pressure. It may also complicate peaceful and diplomatic efforts to resolve the North Korean crisis. Share your thoughts on this matter in the comment section below.